Hi there, this is John Lebensold for KillerPHP.com, and this is part four in a seven-part series on uh, jQuery and doing a jQuery introduction. Today what I'm going to be doing is looking at how we can introduce Ajax into our project. We're going to start with some very simple Ajax, and in the following video, we're going to be looking at how we can incorporate PHP into that Ajax. But this is going to be pretty straightforward so that we don't get uh, overworked too quickly. So I'm going to start off by just going back to a very simple project by deleting what I had in the last video. And I'm going to call this Introducing Ajax. We're just going to delete all the other stuff that we have down here. And I'm going to save this file as introducing ajax.html. So we'll go back here. This is our new file. So I'll say introducing ajax.html. And there we go. So we have a very simple project set up. There's not too much here yet, but uh, there will be soon. So the idea of Ajax is that you make a call asynchronously using JavaScript and that you get in return XML or XHTML. In other words, you make a call to another website, usually on the same domain, on the same web server, and you say, hey, give me some content. And then the response gets filled in wherever you want on your page. So in our case, I'm just going to create a class, or a div rather, of type content. And we'll have a paragraph here with some text. Let's imagine that this is some kind of comment retrieval system. I'm just going to copy this. Let's say this is my wonderful text, my blog post, what have you. I'm talking at great length about something of great import. And then at the bottom here, I have this little uh, button. With an ID called get comments. And it's just going to say read comments. And that's it. And then underneath my wonderful content, I'm going to have an ID. It doesn't really matter if it's an ID or a class, because we just have one. Technically, you should only have one ID of a certain name on any HTML document or XHTML document. So if you're only going to have one comment container, then an ID is probably more accurate than using a class. And that's it. I'll refresh this again. We've got read comments. It doesn't do anything. We've got some text, and that's about it. Now, in order for this to work, we need to create a page that can be requested. Now, typically, when you go online and you search Ajax tutorials, they clutter the introduction with a whole bunch of PHP, which isn't really necessary to get started. If you go, I've got an empty text file here. And I'm going to create basically an, ex uh, an extra file here. And this is just going to be called, uh, and I'm just going to save it as some request.html. Okay, so it's an empty file. And it's not going to be a complete HTML document. I'm just going to have a div inside here with a comment box. You'll notice that I'm using a class this time because it's the possibility that we could have multiple comment boxes. And we're going to have a header 3 with a comment title. And let's say we have a class of type comment meta with a bit of meta information. So we'll have a date. And then we're going to have a paragraph with my new comment. So we've got some just kind of a little snippet of HTML code with a bit of data in there. We can imagine that this would very easily become dynamic data 
But for now, let's just look at it as HTML. Nothing more, nothing less. There's no server side happening at this point. Now doing the Ajax call is really quite simple. In here, all I need to do is start with a click event. So this time we're going to say get comments dot click open up another anonymous function and then we'll just do a return false at the bottom and now we're going to look at the ajax function so we just do dollar sign dot ajax close that and in here we're going to be using those squiggly braces again the same ones that we looked at in the animate function so I'm going to open those up and we're going to be passing in certain parameters and then variables associated values associated with them so the first one is type and I want it to do a get as opposed to a post so when you're thinking about PHP you might have seen this variable the get variable well get is basically grabbing parameters off of the URL and post is grabbing variables or parameters uh, in a header section of an HTML request. Our URL is going to be some request.html. And then we're going to have this variable called success, which is actually going to be a function. So in JavaScript, you can have variables behave as functions. Basically what happens is that when the variable gets accessed, it just runs the function. In this case, I know that the Ajax library returns a response object. And that response is basically whatever is found in the calling page. So for starters, I'm just going to do a console.log on response. Hit save, refresh this, we're going to open up Firebug. If I click on read comments, you'll see that we did a get request on some request.html, and we just got a whole bunch of HTML data. What's interesting about Firebug, and I'd like to highlight this at this point, is that if I click on this, I can see that this is the response, and I can also get some information about how it was passed from the user's browser to our uh, server and then what the server actually responded with. Because if you get some PHP in there and you've got some errors in your PHP, you might not actually see them in your page if for some reason your Ajax call doesn't work properly and you get you know some issues with your return variables. Anyways, so now that we know that the response is actually working, we can use our DOM manipulation tricks from the last video to actually show some of these comments. Instead of the console.log, I'm just going to append to my comment container and I'm going to pass in my response. Well, let's refresh that and there we go. So these are actually being pulled in asynchronously. Now it's not very pretty at this point. In fact, they're just kind of getting dropped in there. And one of the nice things about Ajax is the animation that comes with it as well. Now, I could go back to some request.html and specify that my class is, you know, a visibility hidden or something like that. But if you're thinking of the concern of the Ajax call, you want to limit the amount of view specific data or page specific data associated with the request because really we're talking about animation and the the calling website should have that choice not necessarily the ajax returning server in other words we don't want some request to be bound to the site that it is being accessed from necessarily and we can get around this by just hiding and then fading in whatever the response object is. So instead, I'm just going to wrap the response in a jQuery object and then do a hide. In other words, we're going to hide it. And then we're going to fade it in. Refresh this again. And then you'll see that 
now we're getting this kind of fade in effect, which is kind of neat. So that's it for my introduction to Ajax. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at how we can actually do a bit of PHP in here as well. Thanks for listening.